Hi there, my name is David Batsoffen and I host a travel blog called Travel and Things. And every Saturday for the past two months, I've been chatting to um, photographers. And last month we did marine photography and this month we're doing wildlife photography and specifically in photo vehicles and in photographic hides. And joining me for the month of December is wildlife hide and vehicle expert, may I call you that? Janet Klein, how are you, Janet? If you'd like. <laughs> you're looking very unbushified. Does that mean that you're not currently sitting in a hide focusing on some wildlife currently? No, I'm definitely not. I'm sitting down in Cape Town where I've been locked down um, right. and still hoping to get back. Um, mm. I'm going to head back probably around January sometime next okay. year. So I thought we'd use this first Saturday in December to find out a bit about Janet, um, a bit about your background, uh, because people looking at you now would go, but hang on a second, this lady looks like she belongs in an office and not the type of office we're going to be alluding to during the, the course of this particular chat. So, so take us through a bit of your background. Um, okay, <laughs> where to start? I've had quite a diversified background and people wouldn't be wrong in seeing a city slicker because I was brought up and raised in the city uh, right. and spent the first years of my adult life working in the city I um, had a business there and at some point uh, always loved the bush, loved getting out, loved photography as a hobby and at some point quite late in life I decided to make the change, went out, studied guiding and moved to the bush moved to the low felt, started off just volunteering my time for the Kruger Park, that sort of thing, and slowly but surely worked my way through the ranks and kept studying until I was a trails guide. And after that, yeah, as that, it was more of a fortuitous thing that my photography as a hobby and my guiding background came together and I ended up managing the Mishatu photographic concession, which is which what is I do really, now when I'm not in is, lockdown. When you're not in lockdown and in a dress. Um, which is where you and I met, what was it, two years ago, if I remember correctly? Yeah, I think it was about two years ago. Was yeah. it the launch of David launch... Bristow's book? If I'm not mistaken. Correct, correct. Um, okay. uh, an interesting launch for a variety of different reasons and a, a great way, probably one of the best book launches I've ever attended um, yes. because it was in the bush. I mean, if you're going to do a book about the bush, then it's got to be launched in the bush, but that, we're not talking about David Bristow, he, he insidiously creeps into all wildlife conversations yes. as, as the other DP. Yes. Um, he'll be pleased to know. Uh, we'll, say, we'll send him a joint account this time. I've already sent him. I think we should. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so let's chat about, about wildlife photography and specifically out of the back of a vehicle and, and out of a photographic height. I know that you've got some slides that we're going to chat about and specifically building um, looking at your career as we are um, today. When, when you ran your business though, that was a totally different business. That had nothing to do with the bush or with wildlife, did it? No, not at all. <laughs> um, it was basically, it was an engineering company. Um, my ex-husband and I owned together. Right. And essentially putting a turning shop and I had an office in the back of a factory that didn't have a window. No. <laughs> form of entertainment was hearing the people in that factory behind us and I some days didn't know what the weather was like and never heard a bird and it was yeah it, it, pretty much a year of sitting in that bleak situation um, that we decided that we decided we had to actually get out and start right. doing something we yeah it's, I mean, but I mean from the sublime to, from, from the ridiculous to the sublime Exactly. Yeah. You know, <laughs> no, it, it's quite a it's a change, and obviously, mm. when you, you make the change, there's a lot of insecurity. You're yeah. giving up quite a lot. You know, there's a, a very big financial loss at first. And <laughs> yeah. Quite scary. But yeah. uh, as what is what do they always say? We get paid in sunrises and sunsets. Oh, ah, <laughs> um, fair. And after time, you could just build it back again. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, and it's, it's a scary move. It is. I always try and say to my my bank manager when when he deigns talk to me, um, that it's only money. Uh, he doesn't see it that way. He said it's only money if it's in your account. If it's if there's nothing in your account, then there is no money. What part of that? Yeah, it's another story. story. <laughs> I I think that people and and specifically maybe I'm being a bit sexist and um, with this next question, 
um, Janet. I think people have a specific view of guides and specifically women in khaki um, that is, is no longer valid. Um, it's not just uh, it's not just people, you know, wandering around looking good. It's people that that are professional at their job and should be treated as such, not with the disdain that I've seen some guests treat guides with. Yeah, um, they are professionals. They've come through the same training. Um, yeah. It's not that we're given any chances. If you, for example, when I was still doing trails, I had to pass the same shooting assessments, the same, everything yeah. is not the same assessments to get in. You know, if you've got to be able to change a wheel and do all the same things. So you should be. Um, yeah, unfortunately, there is still a little bit. I don't want yeah. to harp on about the negative <laughs> side, but it's not that many. But I have, yeah. I've had a few instances where people have got in the vehicle with me and gone, oh, you are mm. God. <laughs> you <know? laughs> Clearly, when I'm doing walking trails, I think people felt a little bit uneasy with that. But, you know, you just don't play up to it. I never played up to it. Just but, take it in your stride, just smile, and <laughs> eventually you win their confidence. Isn't, isn't the response to that a, a sort of a, an up and down look at them and go, and you're my guest. I'd love to. <laughs> <laughs> no, I always think the response to that is just to not just show no, don't show them anything, mm. don't show any weakness. Yeah. And just carry on as normal. It's easier with photography, obviously, as a photographer. Um, that, yeah, I was that, going. To, I, I was need... going to segue straight into photography and leave leave that behind. Um, so, what made the change from trails guide to photographer? Oh, we seem to have lost Janet momentarily. She is paused in a rather interesting position there. Hopefully, we'll get we'll get her back uh, very quickly. I'm back. Um, you're back! Yay! Um, Yay. <laughs> Some, it says your internet connection is unstable. It's on drugs. It's being dealt with. Don't tell me my connection is unstable. <laughs> so let, let's segue straight into photography. Um, trails guide to photographer. Was it was it a an easy move or was it a conscious move or was it just something because you already had photography as a background um, or as a hobby? Was it an was it an easy transition? Yeah, it wasn't a conscious transition, to be honest. Um, I had done a lot of photography and I was posting it out quite a lot. Um, and But I was getting towards the end of my trails. I was in now my sort of late 40s and, you know, being out in the bush for four days at a time, carrying 20 kilograms on your back <laughs> and digging for water, making fires, gets tiring. And I, I was tired and I knew it. And it had started to cross my mind what what, what what's next <laughs> and the company that I actually work for now C4 Photo Safaris they run this concession in Mashatu and they were looking for a freelance guy to go up for a few days to do photography and mm -hmm. um, Shem got my number and phoned and asked I it was you know quite a surprise to me and obviously I immediately accepted you know <laughs> up to my car, went up to Botswana, spent, I think it was about five days then, and it worked. It just, mm -hmm. he was happy with me. I was happy doing that. Um, so I became quite a regular freelancer for them over a number of years. Um, right. For about three years, I was the backup for the permanent couple that worked there. And then when they left, he approached me and yeah, then I went up to go and work. <laughs> and I took the position readily because I was happy to sort of let trails go at that stage. Mm -hmm. And yeah, <laughs> that's where you didn't I find leave. myself now, four years later. From, from, from leaving the Mashatu camp to either drive into the photographic hide or to getting on a photo vehicle, you don't have to lug a 20 kilo backpack and you don't have to load a 458 it just in case something happens. You can load a 400 F2.8, but that's all you need. I was need. gonna say, <laughs> I think my camera equipment weighs more than my backpack that I used to carry <laughs> on trails. You see, that, that, <laughs> but I only have to lug it to the vehicle. <laughs> fair enough. But you see, this this is always my, my issue as a photographer um, going on a trails um, uh, event, is what camera do I take with me? Um, because I don't want to carry a big 560 or something like that. It's heavy. And then it's always no, that yeah. shot. If you take a, I don't know, a, a 300 lens with you, it's just that the, 
the animal that you're trying to shoot is always just out of range and you sort of ah, forget it. I'll just do the walk. I'll photograph animals at some at some later stage. Carry enough yeah. gear to shoot um, dung That's beetles. That's exactly the way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> just enjoy the walk is so immersive. You don't still want to be thinking about taking photos and that. Yeah. So, so there's a time and a place. There is a time and a place and on a walk is not really one of them. So tell us about an average day. <laughs> not currently because an average day for Jen currently is totally different from when you're working. So take us back to either pre-lockdown or post, well, you don't know what post-lockdown is going to be like, but take us back to sort of in the beginning of the year. What would a typical day at Mishore to be like for you, Janet? Oh, so obviously it's an early rise, got to get out. And I have a colleague, Aubrey uh, Botswana guy. So between him and I will decide we run the photo vehicle and we have this photographic hide. So let's say today I'm doing the hide. Um, we, we sort of share that amongst ourselves so that we get a bit of variety as well. We're not always yeah. in the hide or on the vehicle. Let's say I'm doing a hide, I'll get up early, sort of 4.35, depending on the season. Um, and Quickly, quick coffee, head down, get into my vehicle, head down to the hide before the arrival of the guests and really just set it up, open it up, check that, you know, do a safety check that there's no creepy crawlies in the hide, no dangerous animals on the outside, you know, open up and just prepare for them. I guess post COVID-19 is going to include a lot of disinfecting and sanitizing. Yeah, <laughs> and then really wait for the guests to arrive. And normally that, that sort of 15, 20, minutes is the favorite part of my day where I get right. to sit alone in the hide and just wait um, and then the guests arrive and it's it's a spending three hours with them um, doing photography and yeah. I have everything from cell phone photographers through to professionals um, and helping them those that need help um, helping anticipate the animal behavior just pointing out sightings identifying birds that sort of thing so it's kind of a stationary guiding position yeah um, guests leave, I walk up and head back to camp, have a brunch and middle of the day spent doing admin, editing photos, social media, <laughs> writing blogs for Michelle to, you know, there's always 101 things to do. And then rinse and repeat the afternoon, <laughs> I might head down about an hour or two earlier. Um, maybe there's some maintenance, there's also maintenance issues that we've got to look after. You know, the, the elephants dig up pipes, the elephants break solar panels. I like to get in there early, check that sort of thing. And yeah, afternoon session with hides, back to camp, <laughs> done. Rinse, rinse and repeat. Um, I like that. I may, I may use that somewhere along the line. Uh, I think that's what people forget. Guests forget. They see you on the vehicle. You go, good morning. We're going to drive to the hide. It'll be uh, so long and we'll spend so much time there. And this is how I'd like you to behave. And then you get in the vehicle, come back, they go off to breakfast and you vanish. And I think a lot of people think, ah, she's just gone back to her room. She can park off for the rest of the day. And perhaps we'll see her this evening. So between now, breakfast and uh, mid-afternoon, Janet has nothing to do. Janet can just go and lie on her bed and read a book if necessary. They, don't realize, <laughs> we, they don't realize what goes on yeah. behind the scenes. And I know that you and I chatted about photo editing just a, a couple of days ago. Um, people don't realize when you sit down to, to do that sort of stuff, before you turn around, it's hours that have gone. You don't, yes. you know, it's, it's not just an instantaneous thing, pop a picture in and it pops out the other end 15 seconds later and it's all done and dusted. No, exactly. And I obviously I need to supply part of the, 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 the contract or the, the deal there is that I supply Mashatu and Photo Mashatu with images for social media brochures. Now, social media, you're putting out an image a day. Yeah. So between Aubrey and myself, and you know, you, you'll understand that because you might take a go away and take a series of 100 photos and you only use three or four and there's a lot of pressure to get good <laughs> images you know, I'm, not, I'm not looking for that one winning shot that's a month I, yeah. I need a shot every <laughs> second day at least so you are doing that um, and you know the captions captions yeah. is my worst nightmare <laughs> you know, everything needs a caption I'm a photographer not a writer I, know. I sit down I, I have a friend who who is a one of my editors some years ago in the newspaper and he is so good with captions he really and truly is. I used to just send him images going, you caption because you're better at it than I am. And if I send yeah, you a I caption, need you, one of those. <laughs> you, you're, going to, you're going to toss it anyway and, and write one of your own. 
So why should I yeah. stress about it? Exactly. Oh, it kills me. <laughs> yeah, no, there is. And then obviously there's maintenance issues. Maintenance is a real thing. We have three vehicles. Mm. Vehicles break, you've got to get them fixed. Um, things break at the hide. So, so there's, oh. a, there's that sort of thing. And you're quite isolated. It's not just yeah. pick up the phone and phone a mechanic and say, come in and sort. Can, <laughs> can you MacGyver one of those vehicles? Are, are you adept at sort of reconnecting stuff? and changing tires and doing all of that, that sort of relatively simple maintenance. I'm not asking you to rebuild an engine. <laughs> Look, uh, there's a roll of duct tape and <laughs> cable ties is an essential in any Bush vehicle. And yes, I have MacGyvered a, yeah. yes. And a, and a Swiss Army knife. <laughs> a Swiss Army knife. And you can, you can get from A to B and then from there on, I don't know what I'm doing, but I have, <laughs> I have taped parts to, to my car <laughs> <laughs> and dug myself out of mud and oh, all sorts. <laughs> Janet, um, a typical day in a hide uh, for you, the, the three hours, well, it's a little bit longer than three hours for you because you were there before them, but you leave when the guests leave, am I correct? Because you have to take them yeah. back to camp. It's not a case of another vehicle comes to fetch and you stay behind to tidy up or is that what happens? No, I stay behind. Um, a, the, a guide is assigned to the guests and right. he, he drops them off, he collects them. He stays nearby um, uh, in case of emergency or something like that. And then I stay, once they leave, I stay quickly tidy up um, uh, and mm -hmm. once a week wash floors, that sort of thing. <laughs> and sometimes it's just really lovely and I might decide to spend an hour on my own and enjoy yeah. it. But by then it's really hot and quietening down. The animals obviously, once it gets very hot, they, they wander it off. quietens down. Yeah, yeah they wander off and go rest on the shade. People hear us talk about hides, and I think we need to also make mention that there are different types of hides. There are yes. above ground hides, there are underground hides, there are ground level hides. Now the hides at Mashatu is a sunken container, am I correct? Correct, and I can show you a photo yes, please. if you like. So let's share your screen. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> We're going to try this, share screen. <laughs> And where's the photo? And there's the photograph. Oh, is oh. it there? No, it can't. there it is. There it oh, is. Oh, fantastic. There you go. So this is my hide. Okay. <laughs> um, yes, it's a sunken container. It's actually two containers. This You're only seeing half of it here. Mm. And on that side, there's another equal size that side. We take eight guests there. And you're at eye level to the animals, as you can see. Well, not eye level to an elephant. No. <laughs> you're at eye level to drinking animals, not elephants. Well, the, <laughs> sort of the, the interesting thing about elephants being, um, because I, aside from your height, I've been in another one, which was slightly lower than this, whereby the elephants could actually come over the top of the hide, and they tended to do that. And then they'd put their front feet directly in front of you, and rub their belly on the top of the hide because it was concrete and it was a great scratching post for them. Um, it's rather terrifying the first time it happens. I had been warned about it and I was told, put a wide angle lens on your camera, just stick it outside and push play. And then you, you worry, about, don't look at your screen, you'll worry about pictures afterwards. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Fortunately, we, we've we've elephant protected ours with the sort of throwing branches and that yeah. over the top because from the back they could walk on, but we don't mm. want that. It's only a container. Um, yeah. I've never had that. I've also had one or two do a little have a little scratch in the corner over there, that sort of thing. Um, they swim and they get literally one two meters away. I think in one of the other weekend uh, chats, I'll prepare some photos mm. showing just how close they get. Um, and you know, I've had trunks come in and sniff around the camera equipment, which is always terrifying because I know how much that equipment's worth yeah. <laughs> for a lot of my guests. <laughs> but yeah, no, no issues at all. It's quite a special thing having an elephant's trunk in sniffing around your face, that sort of thing. Have you ever had them spraying your guests? I have, yes. Um, <laughs> I should. I, I didn't have that photo ready, and it take too long to show you. But I have one of myself covered in head to toe in mud from a good full trunk full of mud. <laughs> you know, you, yeah, no. you, you can see there how close the hide is to the water. And I think what is important for people to note 
um, when you're sitting in the hide is A, there's, there's hide etiquette. You don't want loud noise. You don't want to be listening to, to music or anything like that. You just want to be quiet and in the moment. And I know that the group that I was with that spent time with you, we sat when the first 26 elephants arrived, which, was, which took a bit of time. I know when they left, we were all in tears. It was a, for some reason, it was just hugely emotional. And then what, for the next two and a bit hours, over 300 elephants came through there. And you get to a point where you go, you know what? Let me put my camera down. Let me just enjoy the moment. And then every now and again, you can pick it up and try, you know, try something different. But you can't be yeah. photographing constantly for three and a half hours. You'll drive yourself mad. Yeah, no. Well, some people do, um, obviously. Oh. <laughs> but I, I it, you know, I understand if you're only in um, coming to Africa once in your yeah. lifetime. But those, particularly the people that I often will tell them, go to them and say, please do yourself a favor. You've got thousands of photos. Just just sit down, just sit and watch <laughs> this for a minute because yeah. you also want to feel it. <laughs> yeah. It is an incredible experience. This you had a thing... particularly good day. I must just warn everybody. It's we not don't always have like that. <laughs> every day. <laughs> but it was but an also, exceptional day. I remember it, it, it. it was indeed. But also, I think that people, um, and I won't generalize, I'll use myself as an example. I think if you, if you, focused behind or if you're just looking at everything through a viewfinder that's in front of you the peripheral stuff gets lost you don't see the warthogs that are now literally in your face to the left or to the right the doves or the um red billed uh, quilias that are yes. you know dashing in and out and that you're missing the images of so it's that whole peripheral spatial awareness of being yes. in in that moment and I suppose for you, every day is different. Yes, every day is different. And I mean, one of the, the, the big things that I do as the hide guide, if you want to call it that, <laughs> is I'm aware of the peripheral moment. So when people are just focused in on the lion or the elephant, whatever it is that they're doing, I'm the one that's saying, oh, coming in from the left, we've got a steambok. That's quite a special sighting at water. You know, steamboks yeah. don't drink that often or, you know, I don't know, there's a little sparrow hawk that's just flown in on the right and just pointing out these things because otherwise people would come away with photos of one species only and that's <laughs> yeah. one that we're looking at through the viewfinder. <laughs> Janet in, and helping in, anticipate flying and diving birds. <laughs> you know, that's always a thing. Somebody warned me and said normally a bird will poop before it flies. So, so watch for the tail lifting. And my favorite image is of a... Um, uh, of a, a snake eagle eating a puff adder that I took. I've got the puff adder going in one ah. end and poop coming out of the other. Up it's, the other end. Yeah, I think I think I'd, I'd you scared. You to make space. <laughs> yeah. No, I think I'd scared the snake eagle. So when we came around the corner, so he was busy munching uh -huh. and he pooped so he could fly off. Um, uh -huh. I, so because I, I, you know, I think one is connected to the other. Um, Janet, I, I know that um, time-wise we, we are limited today uh, for a variety of reasons. And I know that I said that there was going to be a trick question. Um, oh. and, then, and then you reminded me that we'd spoken before, we've done an in-conversation with before, and I asked you the question then, tell me about Janet in matric. So I can't do that again. So, <laughs> I will, so I've, I've racked my brains and I've wondered if I found Janet in a supermarket, and I was to look into her, into her trolley, what would I find too much of in the trolley? Now, chocolate is not an answer, okay? Uh, okay. So I need well, to be, are we talking post-COVID or <laughs> <laughs> budgets have changed? Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk pre-COVID. <laughs> Let's talk pre-COVID. What would I found too much of in your trolley that tells me Janet Klein is a mm -hmm, a holic. <laughs> well, you would find wine, but um, okay. normally because I've got a stock up to take. But no, that's not. You wouldn't find too much. No, that's that's um, not what. When I say a holic, I mean there's chocoholic, there's no, chocoholics, all those Chocoholic. Um, how? I'm just trying to think. Gotcha. You see. <laughs> Actually, what you, what you would. 
find when I'm stocking up to go, I'm, I'm now thinking in terms of I work six weeks on, two weeks off. So right. I do a big shop before I go back to Nishatu. Um, and what you would find is that I stock up on a lot of fresh, th not fresh, frozen fresh things like frozen berries and okay. um, that sort of thing, just because I miss that. Although I, the lodge does have fresh salads, I like to make my own smoothies and that sort of thing, which sounds okay. really boring. But that's what my trolley would be too full of there. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Janet, what can viewers expect over the next, what is, four weeks? I think our last chat will be just before Christmas. So I know that for that one, we're going to be looking at what's going to be in our, in our Christmas stocking, um, mm -hmm. hopefully. <laughs> Although I somehow <laughs> doubt it. Uh, I don't think COVID will allow that. But what are we going to be looking at? What are you going to be uh, chatting to our viewers about during December? Yeah, I think what we'll uh, definitely, I want to do a lot more on hide photography. Uh, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And maybe looking at, you know, there's a lot of hides being built at the moment. Uh, a lot of lodges, that sort of place are. And I just want to discuss what makes a good hide. What are the, what are the things you're looking at for photo when you're photographing in a hide? Um, mm -hmm. Uh, we'll get on to that. Maybe we'll do a discussion on that. And I'd love to share some of my special moments from a hide and the other things that you can look at in the hide, the smaller, you know, the smaller things and not the obvious things. So maybe we do a bit of that. And then obviously also the, the difference between hide photography and photographing from a vehicle. And maybe we could sort of end off on something doing, I'll share some photos taken from a vehicle and why that was possible versus a hide. Great stuff. Janet, thank you so very much for chatting to us today, for setting the scene for December. And I look forward, I really and truly do, to, do uh, to these episodes with you. It's going to be fun. Thank it, you. It is indeed. Um, if you want to see some of Janet's work, just as a matter of interest, Janet, do you have um, a Facebook presence or an Instagram presence? That people can I have an Instagram to. and Facebook presence. Um, right. Instagram is probably the best place, and it's just my name, Janet Klein, and that's K. Oh, I think my name's on the screen. K L E Y N. Great yes. stuff, <laughs> Janet. Thanks very much. We'll yeah. chat again next Saturday. Bye for now. Thanks, David. Lovely. Bye bye.